This content is brought to you by Dr. Red's Virtual Labs. Sign up for free and start learning by doing. Continuous stirred tank reactors, or CSTRs, exhibit distinct behaviors depending on whether the reactions occur in the liquid or gas phase. For reactions in the liquid phase, it is generally safe to assume that the density of the reaction mixture remains constant or changes so minimally that it can be disregarded for most practical applications. Conversely, in gas phase reactions, changes in the molar quantity of the reactants and products directly influence the density of the mixture. This is a critical factor that must be considered when determining the appropriate size for the reactor. Now, let's delve into a straightforward example to elucidate these concepts further. In this reaction system, each mole of compound A yields two moles of compound P, leading to an increase in the total number of molecules. The reaction follows first-order kinetics with respect to compound A. To obtain the rates of formation for A and P, we multiply their stoichiometric coefficients with the rate equation. Let's proceed to derive an equation for the exit concentration of reactant A in a liquid phase reactor at steady state. The material balance is established as usual. The molar inflow plus the rate of formation within the reactor must equal the molar outflow plus the rate of accumulation. At steady state, there is no accumulation within the reactor, so this term is eliminated. In this liquid phase system, the density is essentially constant, so the volumetric flow rate, V0, is conserved at both the reactor's inlet and outlet. We divide by V0 and replace the ratio of reactor volume to volumetric flow rate with the term spacetime, tau, not. Upon inserting the rate of formation into our equation, C1A becomes the only unknown. This allows for a straightforward calculation of the exit concentration of the reactant A, and by applying the reaction's stoichiometry, the exit concentration of the product, P. In the gas phase reactor, the same principle applies. However, the outflow rate, denoted as V1, is no longer the same as the inflow rate. After accounting for spacetime, we see a problem. The equation now has two unknowns, the exit concentration C1A and the flow rate V1. We need more equations. Let's introduce the mass balance for the product. Looks nice, but now we have two equations for three unknowns. To solve this, we note that the gas phase CSTR operates at constant temperature and pressure, here 500 Kelvin and 10 bar. The ideal gas law applies under flow conditions as well. It relates the pressure to the total concentration, giving us the third equation needed. One may wonder why didn't we use the total mass balance for the third equation. It's because the total mass balance is really just a linear combination of the individual mass balances so there's no guarantee of a unique solution. Let's go ahead and solve the system of equations in Excel. The operating parameters are displayed on the left. Temperature is set at 500 Kelvin, pressure at 10 bar, and we've selected a space time of 10 minutes. The feed concentration is determined from the pressure and temperature. In this example, the reaction rate constant is 0.008 per second. The unknowns we aim to solve for are at the top right, highlighted in red. We'll input initial guesses to better understand the calculation process. The reaction rate is calculated from CA and the rate constant. Each equation to be solved is divided into two parts. We write the left-hand side in one cell and the right-hand side in an adjacent cell. The Excel formulas are written just as the equations on paper. Here we utilize named cells for clarity. We'll use Excel Solver to minimize the difference between the left and right sides. The error is squared to ensure it's always positive.
configuring Excel Solver is straightforward. We select the sum of the errors from all three equations as the objective function to minimize. The cells Excel modifies are the unknown parameters. No extra constraints are necessary for this simple system. The solution appears reasonable, and the errors are notably small. According to the obtained solution, the volumetric flow rate increases by a factor of 1.73 due to the change in molar amount in the reaction. Let's validate this in Dr. Red's virtual lab. The CSTR starts off filled with an inert gas at a pressure of 10 bar. This inert gas is then displaced by the reactant. Steady state is reached in the reactor after approximately 40 to 50 minutes. The flow rate ratio, indicated by small gray circles, aligns well with our calculated result.